I've been making some background papers that I want to show you. Um, I just kind of pulled all of my stuff out, my paint and ink and stuff, and spread it out, and have just been making tons and tons of papers. So for this batch, I just did a lot of different backgrounds. Um, no particular theme or reason in mind. I just felt like I was short on background papers, decorative papers. So um, one thing I did was I have this little Moleskine journal that is going to be like a travel journal because I think I'm going to be going out of town in a couple weeks. So I just painted random pages in it just to get them ready for the trip. Nothing special. Okay, these these I punched out of the uh, paper that I use underneath my work surface, you know, because I always have some kind of scrap paper down to work on. I don't even know what you call that. I was watching a video the other day, and the girl called it her drop paper. She was British, and that was her drop paper. So I think I'll just call it my drop paper, and that's, that's different. But um, I had some old manila paper that I was using like this for my drop paper and it got all painty and wonderful so I just used a big flower punch and punched a bunch of these flowers out of my drop paper because they pretty like that so I'm gonna take those with me on my trip and do something with them don't know what I also made some pages. I didn't make these specifically for my altered phone book. They just happened to turn out to be perfect. And this sucker is almost done. Check it out. I think I've got two more pages to go, and I have absolutely no ideas for those pages. So we'll see what happens. But these are some of the background papers that ended up in here. And they're just painted and stamped and collaged a little bit. See, there's that backing one, and no, oh, that's scrap of paper, and that one. So, and those are my favorite kinds. Oh, and that's uh, my favorite kind to make are just the kind of collagey background papers where you just kind of stick stuff down and hope it turns out right because sometimes it does. I also made some more washi tapes because you know, I have a place to put them now, and we'll show you. Yeah, I think it was just these. And these are made from painter's tape, which I'm finding I really like for washi tape. On the downside, you have to gesso it, unless you want blue, you know. But I was gessoing everything that would stand still anyhow, so it wasn't a big deal. But on the upside, they really um, unstick and re-stick really well. They don't, it, for some reason, it just doesn't lose its sticky easily. So uh, these were gessoed, painted, and stamped, and I found that I really like the rainbow pads, how they look on the washi tapes. And this was just a paper napkin that I put on there, and I'm really liking those. And I used a bunch of them in that altered phone book thing, too. <coughs> um, these are just paint it. Actually, this one was, I have this plastic paint palette thing, and, you know, when the paint gets all kind of goobered up and I'm almost finished and ready to quit, then I'll just take some scrap paper and smush it down on the palette and kind of clean it up with a piece of paper, and then it ends up looking like that, because I could never purposely make a pattern that awesome. That's one of those happy random things. That one I painted and just put some bubble wrap with paint on it. And when I say paint, I'm talking I use either cheap acrylic craft paint that I usually get on sale or um, household latex paint that I get off of the oops rack at the hardware store. That's usually the only kinds of paint that I use. Occasionally I'll buy, you know, special frou-frou fancy art paints or whatever. And there are some things I don't skimp on, like the um, Dr. P.H. Martin's uh, watercolors. Ugh. Okay, I have to have those. They're pricey as all get out. And I figure it's okay for me to buy those because I've saved so much money on all the other stuff that I purposely buy cheap. But yeah, for painting backgrounds, you don't need anything special. That was, um, you know, I often say the paper towel is my favorite art tool. My second favorite has to be plastic wrap because that's just painted on a piece of um, 
gesso paper and then a wad of plastic wrap to give it some texture. And that's just painted. This one's kind of a collage painted, stamped paper and string. I kind of like the way that turned out. Another collage one. And yet another one that I haven't trimmed up yet. That one was painted and stamped. I hope you can see these. I can't tell if there's a glare or not. That one was um, purple paint left in my brush. What I'm going to do with it. So I watered it down and then just let it run onto some... That was just a magazine page. That was another magazine page that I used to clean up my paint palette. I mean, I literally wadded it up and wiped, scrubbed my palette with it. Then when it was dry, I just added some other things, both of those. And those are fun. I can, you know, keep adding things on it until it turns into a journal page or tear it up and use bits and pieces of it. Um, these are more cleanup papers that I use to clean up at the end of the day, wiping my brush on them or cleaning off the paint palette. And then that one I had stamped with the bubble paper. And that was a magazine page. I'm not, I think that was probably a magazine page. I'm not sure what it was. I can still add more to that one. And my paper towels, and I use baby wipes too to clean up. And they just end up being my favorite part of the whole thing. And I use these a lot. And, you know, I'll um, glue these down into journals. And um, I do use them a lot, and I like them. They're sturdy. It's those Viva paper towels. They're just the best because they, they're really sturdy. That was probably a baby wipe. But, yeah, I keep all of my all of my rags and towels because they end up looking just as good as... The, okay, that was obviously from a different painting session. Wrong colors. Don't know how that got in there. There we go. And this one, this book was from um, Lowe's and I got it. I get that Lowe's creative magazine, whatever it is. You get it every few months for free. Lowe's sends it to you and it's got all these um, DIY ideas in it. and You know, it's, it's a good little magazine. I looked through it. This one came with it and it was just all um, bathroom fixtures and stuff and I have no need for it. I may have talked about this in another video too, you know, but I kept it because it has thick pages. These pages are thicker than your average um, regular magazine. So I kept it knowing that I could use those thicker pages easier than just regular flimsy magazine pages. So I thought I would just make this a whole book full of backgrounds where I could just go in when I needed a background, rip one out and use it. So I've got that one. I've got that's tissue paper and paper napkins collaged. And that one has a little stamping going on. And then some of these are kind of typical, I call it the art journal look. You know, that's typical of what you would find in a lot of art journals nowadays. That's another piece of uh, drop paper. And this one, I just sewed all the pages, went through and did that. And this one I was just, you know, painting random colors on. And something happened while I was doing this. This is where the um, Jiffy Pop paper comes in. I noticed that when I was making different um, backgrounds in here, you know, gluing stuff down, painting over it, and I'd hit it with my heat gun, if I stayed in one place too long, the paper bubbled. It didn't just buckle. I mean, it made a bubble with air in it, you know, on both sides. It was kind of the coolest thing, but a little irritating because that wasn't what I wanted. I just wanted it to hurry up and dry my paper. I didn't need a bubble. So then I thought, well, you know, how far can we go with this bubble down? I don't know how well you can see this because it's, it's just texture. But you're going to have to trust me that this is the coolest thing ever. And I found, I did a lot of experimenting with it, and different magazines work differently. It doesn't work on a regular magazine with thin pages. It has to be a thick, 
magazine with thick, glossy paper on it, like a, um, like a fancy catalog or something. This one worked the best out of all of the magazines that I have. I also tried it putting all different kinds of media on it to see if it was just the gesso or if anything would work. I tried it with plain water, which kind of worked okay, with wet gesso, with dry gesso, with acrylic paint, with Mod Podge, with Elmer's, with, um, oh, um, I'll probably just edit that whole thing out. <coughs> this. Let me show you how this works. <coughs> Excuse me. You take, you find a magazine or a catalog with nice, thick, glossy sheets. You paint some gesso on it. I had varying results with all the different things that I tried. Some worked great, some not so great. Some I think it depended on the paper. Others, it depended on what I put on it. It's really hit or miss. So don't go out and buy some kind of fancy magazine to try this. Just wait until one lands on your doorstep because you never know if it's going to work or not. This has a... Uh, this, this catalog worked better than any of them. I have a piece, I mean, I don't know if you can see the bubbles on this that I did last night. It bubbled just amazingly. So there's just something about how this is made that makes it bubble really well. But you'll get varying results, so it's kind of hit or miss. And let me say a couple things too. A um, couple of disclaimers. When you heat this, it does give off some kind of fume. And I'm pretty sure what's happening here is that the glossy coating on the paper is separating from the paper itself and that's why that's what's making the bubbles I'm pretty sure but since you're doing this with heat and you're getting this weird kind of fume thing going on it's probably nine different kinds of toxic you know I don't know so um, you might want to do this outside or in a well ventilated area or something because um, you know, I guess there is a small chance it could be dangerous. And you are working with a heat gun, and you're pointing it at a piece of paper. It could catch fire. So, again, just be really careful, and don't call me if your house burns down, basically is what I'm saying. Okay, let's, let me show you this. Oh, I need my little heat glass thing. Because, although... Yes, I realize I might catch the paper on fire. I really don't want to burn the top of my table down there, so I'm going to put that right there. Let me see. This doesn't happen quickly. It happens kind of slow. So I may speed up the process a little bit so that you won't get bored to death. But I'll show you. When you heat it, it starts to bubble up, and it makes almost a little popping sound. And I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, over the heat gun, but that's why I call it Jiffy Pop, because it's almost like popcorn popping. So, let's see how this goes. I'm using a Weller heat tool, which gets up to about 800 degrees. And I think it takes all of those 800 degrees to make this happen. It worked with my old um, Milwaukee heat tool. Um, but that one gets pretty hot, too. If you have one of those little, like, Ranger heated tools or whatever, I don't think those will work. They just don't get hot enough. You need a hot heat gun. Can you hear it? Kind of neat. And I'm just going to keep calling this Jiffy Pop until the Jiffy Pop people send me a cease and desist order. You know, then I'll have to come up with something else. But. It reminds me of popcorn because it pops. And also, you get areas of your page that are like the old maids, you know. No matter what you do, they just not going to pop. You can heat them over again, heat them like crazy, and they will not pop. 
and on the back. Sometimes if you turn it over, heat it from the back, you can get some additional popping. But like I said, it just when it's done, it's done. Now, since I'm not sure if you can see that at all, I've got an ink pad here so I can roll over it. And so you can see, you can kind of see the texture that you get from it. And it feels all puffy and it sounds all crinkly. And I really like that. So that is my accidental discovery of Jiffy Pop paper. Neat, huh? So I'm probably going to go through here and pop some more. I tried it on this particular paper. It seemed to like the um, thinner coats of gesso more than the thicker ones. See, look. Isn't that cool? I just think that's great. Some of the other magazines, it liked thicker coats of gesso. Some of them worked with plain water. You know, it was just, I had no way to determine which one was going to pop with which medium. So it was a lot of just practice. See, I don't hear very much more popping, so I think we're down to the old maids. That's probably all we're going to get out of that one. Over it so you can see the bubbles. There's your Jiffy Pop paper. I love it. I'll show you some of how these other papers work. Like I said, that Lowe's bathroom catalog thing just it bubbled up better than just about anything. This one, I had several uh, magazines from when we first moved here, and um, they work differently. I thought. Since it'll work with water in some cases, I thought, okay, it's the moisture. So what if I just wad up one of these good magazine papers, you know, drench it with water, and then lay it out, and it'll bubble like crazy. Well, no. It didn't bubble at all. It, it just was wadded up wet, and then now it's wadded up dry. So that didn't work. This was just leftover paint that I had. And I put it on here, and it worked. There was no gesso or anything. I may have already, I might be down to the old maids. Let's find out. Yep. See, that's all the bubbling I'm going to get out of that. Not a whole lot, but still a very cool effect. This is from the same magazine, just with water. I mean, you probably can't see that at all. The bubbles were really, really tiny, but they did bubble. You see it? So plain water worked, but it just gave me really, really small bubbles. So that was out of one book and this was another same kind of a relocation guide. I guess maybe you could write to some random city and tell them you're thinking about moving there and ask them to send you their catalogs because that's how I got these. Maybe you could do that. You know, I guess it would be slightly dishonest, but it's for the sake of art. Um, varying results with this one. This was, I had some of the um, Elmer's in water that is not Mod Podge. 
and it worked so-so. I found out that mostly when I used that, mainly what I got was that the, the glue bubbled up uh, more than the paper did. So that wasn't really what I was looking for. And this one, I couldn't hardly even get the um, gesso to bubble. I put some acrylic paint on it and it bubbled a little bit. But I don't know why that page just wouldn't bubble when others did. This one again, this had the glue on it, the water and glue, and it, you know, just slight bubbles here and there. You know, not enough that I would use that again. But then check out this page. See, I nearly caught it on fire trying to get it to bubble. It wouldn't bubble at all. So I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe this catalog likes a thick coat of gesso or just plain water with a tiny bit of glue. I don't know. I don't know what, what this one wants, but it did not work as well as the last one. And this one, also varying results. Uh, this page uh, just had water on one side. This was just with water, which kind of ruined his complexion. I put some gesso on it and got bigger bubbles. The water had tiny little bubbles. And then the gesso on it made larger bubbles. And this one, you can see it hardly bubbled at all. I've got some bubbles, but I have more burn marks than bubbles because it just was not bubbling well. See, this area here is really almost completely flat. But then it had some pretty good bubbles over here. So, and then this same exact magazine that I narrowly caught on fire trying to bubble right here, bubbled beautifully here. And this one was, of course, in some areas it didn't, but this was a thin coat of gesso on here. And on some of them, I started heating the gesso when it was wet. Others, I waited until it was dry. And it worked either way. Um, you get a little different look with each one. It's almost like an animal print, huh? So there's that one. And then I had this anthropology catalog, which... Um, the pages in it are not as thick as in those others. And I'd gone through and I had intended to just leave it together and then I was just going to kind of do little fun collages on some of the pages. Um, you know, I gessoed over the text or if it had a model in there that I didn't want. And so I'm just going to, I'll do some fun collages in here. But I tried. I tried a couple different ones. Let me see. Okay. I tried this page. You can see this one right here, which had a pretty thick coat of gesso on it. And you can see that it only bubbled right here in the middle. This is no bubbles. This is no bubbles. Well, here's why I think I had gessoed the back and got bubbles there. So it seems to want gesso on both sides. So I went over here on this one that was gessoed on both sides to test that theory. And yes, it did start bubbling fairly well. Let's see if we can get some more bubbles out of that. That's all that one's going to do. Okay. So there you have it. You just never know. Just have to give it a try. See if it bubbles. Sometimes it will. Sometimes it won't. I did try a perfume ad out of a regular magazine. And I put some of the watered down Elmer's on it. And it bubbled just slightly. Uh, black paper. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. You can see the slight bubbles. I actually got more burned glue than I got good, uh, good popping action going on. I slapped some gesso on it, bubbled a little bit better. Got bigger bubbles and more of them. You can see there. 
but very inconsistent. This is all this is all completely flat. And here's where the bubbles are. Why it bubbled here and not here, I will never know. But that's just kind of, it's almost really kind of the fun of it, because um, you don't know how it's going to turn out. It may not turn out at all. It may be awful. So, I hope that you give it a try, because it is a fun thing to do. It makes some really cool background textures that you can paint over or just slap some ink on them. And um, we're just going to keep calling it Jiffy Pop paper until... I hear from the Jiffy Pop people who will either sue me or um, send me some free Jiffy Pop. Wouldn't it be cool if they sponsored my blog or something? You know how all those blogs have all those like arts and crafts companies that sponsor them? I could have Jiffy Pop. That would be awesome. Call me Jiffy Pop. Okay. The end.